हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू द डे फोर और लेक्चर फोर ऑफ द मशीन लर्निंग टीच बाय डूइंग प्रोजेक्ट इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी टुक अ लुक एट द थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ मशीन लर्निंग मॉडल्स सुपरवाइज लर्निंग अनसुपरवाइज लर्निंग एंड री एनफोर्समेंट लर्निंग वी ऑल्सो लुकड एट डे टू डे एग्जाम्पल्स एंड प्रैक्टिकल एग्जाम्पल्स ऑफ दीज थ्री टाइप्स ऑफ एम एल मॉडल्स after the lecture we received a number of great youtube comments one of the comment was uh, can we use the teachable machine interface which we demonstrated yesterday to uh, classify between different types of monkeys and yes it's indeed possible to do that another comment which we received was uh, regarding the comparisons between a kid learning to ride a bicycle and unsupervised learning we also answered that on youtube Uh, similarly uh, keep on commenting on the videos so that uh, we will also discuss the interesting comments in uh, the next day's video so let us get started with today's lecture the main topic of today's lecture is the six steps which are involved in any machine learning project i have looked at around 50 to 60 real world ml projects right now and for all these projects for doing any machine learning project you essentially have to keep these six steps in mind for this particular lecture uh, we will be referring to the mit 6.036 course which introduced this framework the microsoft's uh, lecture or the microsoft's course does not have too much information regarding this if you have not seen the previous lectures kindly see the lecture 1 where we discuss why these are the two courses which we are referring to throughout this series so uh, in today's video i will mostly go through the learnings which i understood based on the mit scores so let's get started the first biggest learning for me was the six major steps in doing any machine learning projects and these six steps are as follows the first step is getting or gathering data the second step is finding a space of possible solutions the third step is characterizing the objective or characterizing what makes a good solution compared to others the fourth step is finding the algorithm the fifth step is running the algorithm and the last step which is the sixth step is validating the result out of these six steps except for running the algorithm all the other things have to be done by humans so the fifth step which is running the algorithm that is the only step which is done by the machine so the reason you are following this journey along with me is that hopefully towards the end of it you will be able to do all these steps you will be able to gather data you will be able to find the space of possible solutions you will be able to characterize the objective you will be able to find an ml algorithm you will be able to run the algorithm and you will also be able to validate the result so that is the main aim for doing any ml project when i looked at these different points intuitively they made sense to me but again they were not connected to any real life example so i did not uh, really understand what they meant so as is the usual practice with me i started making notes uh, and this is what i emphasize throughout this series that whenever you watch a video don't just watch it but simultaneously make notes along with it and as you write you will also see that your concepts are slowly becoming clearer uh, so let us visit these six steps again as we saw the first step was getting the data second step was thinking of a space of possible solutions i figured out that this also means generating a hypothesis let's say that the input is x and let's say that the output is y and we want to generate a hypothesis uh between x between the relationship between x and y the third step is characterizing what makes a good solution so here we have to essentially determine what makes one 
hypothesis is better than the other. In the finding the algorithm, we have to narrow down on the learning algorithm or finalize our hypothesis. Then we have to run the algorithm and then finally uh, we have to validate the result. Again, when I thought about the hypothesis, it made things a bit clearer to me, but still I needed a practical example. So what I did is I have constructed a hands-on practical example for all of you guys who are watching and I have made it in simple LinkedIn, uh, simple Excel sheet so that it will be very easy for you to follow all these, uh, these six steps. So let us look at a simple problem. Let's say you are a person who is tasked with this problem. You are you have visited a school and the school has asked you that uh, based on the number of hours that a student is studying, can you predict the percentage marks of the student? Remember in the last lecture, we saw that ML deals with forecasting more and ML deals with generalization. And this is a problem like that where you have been given some data, let's say, of previous students who have studied for a particular duration and the percentage marks which they have obtained. Your task is, let's say now you take a new student who has studied for some number of hours. Your task is to take that new student and predict the percentage marks of that particular student. You have been tasked with employing machine learning for this. Since you are a beginner, let us resort to these seven steps. The first step is collecting the data. So you go to the school and you ask them that, okay, for me to develop this machine learning model, I'll need data from you. Can you give me some data of number of hours students have studied and the percentage marks which they have obtained? Because remember, without data, ML is nothing. Just like we need food to survive, ML and AI require data. The school says that, yes, we have data for six students. We have data for the hours which they have studied and the percentage marks which they have obtained. And the school gives you that data, right? Uh, when you plot this data, it looks something like this. On the x-axis is hours of study and on the y-axis is percentage marks. Great. Now let's go to the next step. The next step is think of a space of possible solutions. What you want to do as an ML engineer now is to find the relationship between the input, which is the hours of study and the output, which is the percentage marks. So this is when you will think of the space of possible solutions, which means that you will generate a hypothesis. So let us generate a hypothesis. We will generate two hypotheses. The first hypothesis is that of a straight line. So my first hypothesis is that there is a straight line relationship between the output and the input. And my second hypothesis, my second hypothesis is that there is a curve line relationship between the input and the output. Let me mark it with a different color. So this is my second hypothesis. And uh, remember what my first hypothesis was. My first hypothesis was a straight line between the input and the output. So as a ML engineer, you have come up with these two hypotheses. So this is what the second step means. Think of a space of possible solutions. So think of possible hypothesis or the possible relationships between X, which is the input and Y, which is the output. So we have thought of two hypotheses right now. Great. Now let us actually move to the third step, which is characterize what makes a good solution. And this is extremely important. How do we decide which hypothesis is good? Is the first hypothesis good? Is the second hypothesis good? We need some metric right to compare. From the graph it's fine, we can see it, but we need a quantitative metric to compare between these two hypotheses. This is where the loss function comes into the picture. Uh, the loss function is essentially the difference between our guess and the actual data. So in layman's term, it basically means how sad are we that we predicted some guess value G when the actual value was A. That's it. So the loss function is the difference between your guess and the actual value. 
So then what we will do is that we will calculate this loss function for the two hypotheses H1 and H2 and then we will choose the hypothesis which has the lowest loss. Isn't it as simple as that? So we need lowest amount of loss, right? That's the main aim. We need the loss to be as low as possible because we want our guess of the ML model to be as close to the actual model. So this is the third step which is the loss function and uh, we will come to the loss function a bit later but I hope this gives you an intuition to what the loss function is. It's quite simple actually. We will just take the difference between the guess and the actual answer and then compare between the two. So let us do that. Let us take the first line uh, and find the difference between this line and these uh, data points. So it turns out that the difference is quite less. I am not calculating this value right now but if you do you will see that the difference here is zero which means that the loss between the ML model and the actual data points is zero. Whereas if you look at the hypothesis number two you will notice that there are some points which are deviating like this point is deviating a bit, this point is deviating a bit, even this point is deviating a bit. So that will contribute to increasing the loss function and so the loss function will be higher than the hypothesis one which means that the hypothesis one which is the straight line hypothesis leads to the lowest loss function. So let me write it down here. Here we have the loss function equal to zero and uh, let me write here the loss function is actually greater than zero. So we will not go with this hypothesis. Instead uh, we will go with this hypothesis. So let me mark it with a tick mark. So we are going with this hypothesis. Great. So the next step is finding the algorithm which we already did. Finding the algorithm is basically choosing the best possible hypothesis. So in this step we, we determine or finalize the best possible hypothesis for the ML model and that we have finalized to be this, this kind of a straight line. Then the fifth step is running that particular algorithm. So running the algorithm just means running the ML algorithm which we have already done here. So we have plotted this straight line and we have compared it with the actual data and we can see that it indeed matches pretty well. So we have run this algorithm here right now. And the last step which is the sixth step is validation of the result. Validation of the result is an interesting step because here what we essentially have to do is that uh, the principal then tells you that okay you had all this information and you constructed this model right let us test whether you are actually doing a good job so what the principal will do is that I will give you a new student so the principal says that let me actually test whether the model which you have developed is good or not so the principal says that uh, I will actually give you a new student who has studied for six hours and uh, let us see what is your prediction and then I will compare it with what marks the student actually got. So then what you will do as a person is that you will take this input and you will see where it hits the straight line which you have predicted and it hits somewhere here. And then based on that you will see what the prediction of the ML model is. So it turns out that it hits somewhere here which means that uh, this looks to be close to around 55. So you tell the principal that based on your ML model which you have constructed the percentage marks is 55 and the principal says that this is amazing because the actual marks obtained are also 55. So the actual mark which are obtained are also 55 which means that we have validated the result. This means validation. Validation means that you train or you test your model on data which you have not seen before uh, which is also called as the test data and then you compare whether it matches the actual value or not. So that is the real test. So up till here what we did is was called training. This straight line is also called as training. So when we fitted this straight line among these known data points 
that is also called as training so that is similar to so i am writing train here so that is similar to studying for an exam right if you before you practice already known problems so that is training but in the exam you have to face a new problem and then your understanding is tested that is exactly the difference between training and testing which is done here so let me also write testing over here okay so that disappeared but uh, when you gave a new input which was already not known before and you predict the marks that is called as testing and that is also called as validation actually so that is why the last step is important validation of the result so this is the entire pipeline of solving any big machine learning project we took a simple example right now right we took an example of finding an ml model between the hours of study and the percentage marks and then we constructed this ml model which was the straight line uh, so let us go through the sequence of steps again we first gathered the data from the school principal we gathered this data then we generated hypothesis we generated two hypothesis one is a straight line solution which is this and uh, we also generated uh, another hypothesis which is uh, the curved line solution so these are the two hypotheses uh, which we generated then the third step is uh, characterizing what makes a good solution so then we discussed about the loss function and we saw that this this first hypothesis has a much lower loss function than this second hypothesis because here there are points which are very much away uh, from the ml model prediction so then in the fourth step we then find we then finalize the algorithm which is the linear algorithm since it has a lower loss in the fifth step we run this algorithm which means we plotted this straight line and in the last step uh, which is this we validated the result which means that in the last step we actually took a new data uh, as i showed before we took a new data point which was not seen to you previously this data point and we found its prediction and then we compared it with the actual value for the student who had studied for 6 hours and then it turned out that there was a very good match this further indicated that our model performs well on new data as well and which indicates that it is a good machine learning model so i deliberately constructed this excel sheet example so that uh, when you look at these six steps you now have some real life example to associate it with of course when we move to the real world data is much more complicated so for example uh, for example when you move to the real world you will not just have one variable but you will have huge number of other variables which determine the marks of the students and then the hypothesis won't be as simple as straight line the hypothesis can be this kind of a curvy line or the hypothesis can be basically uh, this type of uh, line which fits the data uh, or it can be something like this which fits the data which it can be a huge space of hypothesis which humans cannot come up with on their own so we have to rely on ai to choose which one among these is the best possible hypothesis so in this case actually what we do is that uh, we generate a, some kind of a model with some parameters and uh, those parameters are not known to us. So what we do is that we generate a model class which can take this, this value or which can take this value for some other parameters or which can take some this value for some other parameters. So we just construct one large model which is parameterized and then we optimize those parameters. So instead of manually evaluating 100 different or 3 different models, we take a model which has some parameters and then we tell AI to optimize the parameters itself. Or we mathematically optimize these parameters so that the loss function is minimized. This is called as the optimization problem. And this is what I have mentioned in the uh, second page of the notes. So our main aim is to have very small loss on the training data, right? So the way we do this is that we want to minimize the loss function. So what we do is that we take the loss function and we generate a bunch of hypotheses 
and then we choose the hypothesis which has the minimum loss function uh, so in real life what is actually done is that uh, the simplest thing is that how do we find the best learning algorithm we use optimization techniques the reason is because let's say uh, you cannot compare 100 different models separately separately right but let's say if you take one model which has different parameters then you can optimize those parameters and choose the one with the best or the lowest loss function this is why optimization is so important when we learn about machine learning because ultimately we have to choose from a bunch of possible options which lead to the lowest loss function and the way we will determine the best function which leads to the lowest loss is through optimization procedures and that's why when people say that uh, when you learn machine learning you have to know a bit of optimization that is the reason for it we will come to that in subsequent lectures but here i just want to give you a feel of why optimization comes up in machine learning procedures it usually comes up in step number uh, four where we find the best algorithm and when we minimize the loss function uh, one more thing which is mentioned a lot in MIT's initial lectures is the difference between training set error and the testing set error. So ideally what we want is that when we train using data points which are already known to us such as uh, let's look at this. These are data points known to us. So this is called as the training procedure. We of course want to minimize the loss in the training procedure as well. Uh, this is like doing well on your, your assignments. But the real test is when new data is given to you. The real test is when new data is given to the model such as this, this data point or this data point or this data point which is not included in your training set. You want the loss to be minimum in this data also. So one of the major goals of machine learning projects is not just to minimize the training data because you already see that data. The real test is the model which you have developed. Does it minimize the test data as well? Does it minimize the test error as well? So the loss function, which is a function of the hypothesis and the actual value, it's essentially the difference between the ML model prediction, prediction made by hypothesis, which is our guess, and the actual value. We want it to be low for the training set as well as for the testing set. This is the main challenge of ML models. How can you, let's say you are given weather of yesterday and day before. That's your training data. You can always train an ML model to fit that data. But the real test is, if I ask you to predict weather which is not known to you, can you do a good job? That is called as the generalization problem. Forecasting or estimating something in the future. That's why this last step of validation is so important. Uh, the main question which we will uh, look at later is your question would be how does optimizing training error relate to optimizing test error. So how can we make sure that we generate ML algorithms which not only optimize training error but also optimize test error. And if someone has an answer to this question please put it in the comments. The question is how does optimizing training error. So let's say if I optimize training error here. How am I so sure that I will get less loss for the new data as well? Is there some common pattern between the data sets? What if the data set is completely new? Uh, think about this. We will come to this question in subsequent lectures as well. So to summarize what we learned in today's lecture, we learned that every major or minor ML project essentially has six main steps at the heart of it. The first step is getting the data. Second step is finding the space of possible solutions or hypothesis. Such as the two hypotheses which we generated here. This hypothesis and this hypothesis. The third step is characterizing what makes a good solution or defining the loss function. So the third step is essentially how will you evaluate which hypothesis is better than the other. So that's why you define the loss function. Here I defined the loss function as the difference between the ML prediction and my data points. So it turned out that the loss function in the hypothesis 2 was much higher. 
and when i came to the fourth step which is finding the algorithm uh, this step usually involves finding the best output hypothesis or finding one hypothesis which we are going to go ahead with so we went ahead with this linear straight line approach this is also called regression by the way i am not using that term right now because we have not formally defined it the fifth step is running the algorithm uh, which we do here we uh, plotted the straight line and then the last step is validating the result as we saw this is the most crucial step when you are given new data which your model has not seen before can it do a good job this is also called as a testing error we also saw the difference between the training set error uh, and the testing set error and we saw that it's very important for our loss function to minimize both we want a small loss on training data it's like doing well on assignments but more important is that we need a very small loss on new data which is like doing well in an actual exam uh as we end this lecture i want to leave you with a final thought how does optimizing training error relate to optimizing test error how can we be so sure that when we optimize training error the test error will also reduce and we will answer this question in subsequent lectures as i continue to mention in previous lectures please be active and stay along with me in this journey i don't want you to lose motivation and that's why i am conducting this live series so that you follow with me every single day uh great in subsequent lectures we will be looking at uh, new things we will be looking at linear classifiers we will be then looking at regression and we will also be looking at installing python and running your first python code so uh, stay tuned and i'll see you in the next next lecture thank you